Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. Well, a couple things we're going to go over. First thing, before we get going with Crystal tonight, uh, we're having a few issues with our website, so if you guys pop over there and notice that all the audio archives have all of a sudden disappeared, uh, you will hopefully understand. What we're going to have to do... for the interim here is I'm, I post all the shows on my YouTube page also, and we're going to have to uh, just create links to the YouTube page videos, and you'll have to listen to the archives there for right now until we find some archive hoster that or go to a completely different web hosting service. Uh, the guys we go through, uh, we bought unlimited pages, unlimited space, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But now we're using too many resources, so uh, they, they're telling us that we need to do something different. So we're not very happy with the whole situation. And uh, yes, I know if we wanted to, we could fight this and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, uh, I'm just, we're just going to figure something else out. Uh, most likely end up going to a new hosting service. So if anybody actually knows an excellent hosting service that actually has unlimited web hosting and, and unlimited uh, you know, file sizes and that sort of thing, et cetera, et cetera, is, uh, drop us an email and uh, let us know, and uh, we'll take a look at it. So well, besides that, uh, yeah, go check out the website. We've got... Uh, uh, not a whole lot of new things on there this week because we've been kind of uh, l- had the noose around our neck. But uh, uh, as soon as we get the audio files off there, we'll be able to keep updating the, all the links and stuff that we continue to put on there. And uh, we've got the uh, conference coming up here in a couple of weeks over at East Eddy Ranch that Ramon and I are both going to. Ramon's coming over here in a couple of weeks. And, uh, Yay! Yeah, that's going to be cool. So. We should have a really good time. Uh, a lot of the people we've been interviewing here in the last few weeks will be there speaking. With those going to be uh, Bob Dean, uh, uh, Sufu Jenny Lamb, uh, Neil Neil Kramer, uh, James Gilliland. Uh, who else? Who am I missing? Uh, Jenny Lamb. Uh, missing somebody. Of course, James Gilliland, Neil Kramer, anyways, Bob. Dean. Anyways, it's going to be an excellent, excellent. Mel's doing the. Um, Mel is ho- presenting too, isn't he? Yeah, I think, I think he's doing a presentation, and then they're going to have a big panel thing, and it should be it should be a really fun conference. So I think Carol canceled. Oh if I'm not no, no, they just sent a thing out that she's going to be there on Monday. Oh, she is going to be there. Yeah, she, okay, she's going to be there. Carol Rosen's going to be there on Monday. That is Carol Rosen, right? Yeah. Yeah, so she's going, to be, she's going to be there on Monday for uh, a presentation, too. So, anyways, it should be a, a lots of fun. And uh, Yeah, if you can make it out, uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, if not, we're, we're, we'll uh, let you guys all know how it went after the... Uh, <laughs> actually, we might, we might, we're still working on it. We might do a one-hour live show from there. Hmm. I don't know how that's going to work. I, I kind of uh, got a correspondence from uh, Pam over there, and uh, I believe that there's uh, some presentation or something going on during that time. So yeah, so we might have to the pre-record. four to five o'clock hour. So we may need to do a, a pre-record. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah. um, let me just. No, we we can start over. Oh no, I I'm already recording again. So what we got? <laughs> okay, I just paused. Hold on, let me restart. Oh jeez. Okay, <laughs> now now everybody that's listening to this as it's running on the show is gonna go what? <laughs> okay, you guys probably heard the phone ring in the background, so I had to pause the recording for a second because I had to take that call. And uh, we're back. And let's see. Uh, we we're talking about the conference. Come check us out. Uh, where if we don't do a live with uh, Neil Neil Kramer, we're gonna get the recorded uh, the twentieth, right, Ramon? And it'll air on the twenty uh, sixth. So uh, yeah, yeah. So air the twenty sixth. Yeah. And um, if we so. can, if we can swing it, we're gonna we still got 
uh, a little confusion with uh, the people over there at East City on, on what exactly is happening that day at that time. And if we can swing it, we will be doing live there. But, uh, Maybe actually after this recording, we should just call them and make sure. Yeah, we can do that. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, I'm really uh, excited about this. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it'd be nice to see you again, Ramon. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So, so uh, tonight we have another segment for, of Crystal Clark, and our Lady of the Year, as Ramon called her last year, last last month. And uh, how are we doing tonight, Crystal? I'm doing wonderful. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing fantastic. Uh, a little better. We tried to record this a couple days ago, and and. Uh, I uh, love the way synchronicity works in this world. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I just felt like crap. I felt I did not want to spend a couple hours on the internet uh, on the on doing the, an interview. I just felt horrible. I was, I just felt felt bad. And I overslept. And and so I was sitting here. The talk clock was ticking down to the time we were supposed to call Crystal and. Ramon wasn't on, and Ramon wasn't on, Ramon wasn't on, so finally at 5 o'clock I call Crystal and say, Crystal, I can't believe the way synchronicity works, but I feel like crap, and Ramon is missing in action, so can we reschedule? <laughs> but uh, so I woke up late by 40 minutes. Yeah, so, so, so right there is a, a good example of, of synchronicity in the world and the way it works, because, uh, I mean, at least on my end, it worked out perfect for me because, uh, yeah, it was I was not in the right frame of mind to do an interview. So, but Crystal, uh, we've been talking a lot about the sacred science and the, and the the one law, and uh, something came into my mind here this week: um, practical application of the sacred science in the world. Uh, can you give me any kind of uh, simplistic? example of how to apply the sacred science in a practical everyday way that any person can do um, well sure um, of course we've talked about some of the technologies and that isn't really practical for everyone yet but of course your rice experiment really 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 helps people see the effect that they personally have on their environment. And I think that's really important. It does, it does let us know that the way we communicate, the type of energy that we emanate, the, the thoughts and moods that we have do affect our planet. And I think that's really, really, really important to understand. And I did include some information uh, in the first book about uh, Cleve Baxter and how he was the polygraph technician that hooked a plant up to a polygraph. Oh, and you're you're speaking of um, uh, the secret life of plants. You know, I've I've not seen that. I I've oh, you need Cleve to Baxter. see that. It's yeah, I haven't amazing. seen that. I found Cleve Baxter first. Yeah, he he was really shocked that the moment he thought about burning a plant with fire, it went off the chart on the polygraph. So I know in past shows we've talked about how important it is and how responsible it is to work through our own pain and, our, and really focus on our own growth as individuals because what we do or don't do affects the entirety of the planet that we live on in some way. So people do talk about earth changes. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different theories about what's happening, but it, but Again, if we go back to just really simple things like Masari Moto's work and even what Cleve Baxter uncovered, we, we find that all of creation is tied together. So if you change one thing, you change the others. And so and because there are 7 billion of us on the planet, it's really important that we work on self because the planet feels what we do. And on a very, very small scale, that's what Masari Moto and Cleve Baxter taught us to understand. So, so, uh, for example, I when I when I get myself a glass of water, I use bottled water all the time. I mean, it's uh, I, I don't 
touch the fluoride stuff. But when I get myself a glass of water, I always put some form of intention into the water. I'm, I'm, I'm consciously project something into the water, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, just if, if, if it's just a blank energy or my own energy or love or whatever I project into the water, I always project something in there. So that to me, in my own personal life, that's a practical application of the sacred science. Very much so, and I like that you said that you are consciously doing it, because we're doing it anyway, even if we aren't conscious of it. It's still happening. So that's a really important you know, uh, way of looking at it, is that if you know you're having that kind of an effect, even on your own water, create the kind of effect that you want to experience. Right? That's really important. And I do it when I cook, especially. Um, you know, when I slice a tomato... I don't just grab it and, and cut it open. I, I notice the color, how beautiful it is. I, I smell it, the aroma. I, I thank the food for giving us what we need to sustain ourselves and, and to share the experience. And I think that that's really one of the biggest things that we're missing is gratitude. Right. We are. We don't. We don't have gratitude for things anymore because we just see them as things. We don't see them as alive. We don't see them as uh, part of our experience in ways that are really magical. We just see everything as stuff. It's just stuff. And it, it, I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth. So I think that interacting with all of creation, whether it's our water whether it's the water in a bottle or the water in the ocean or with our animals or our plants or our fellow man or our children, we really need to try to always do it from a space of gratitude. And, and it can be hard sometimes because, especially with people, you yes, know, plants absolutely. and animals are the easy part. Yeah, people, not so much. But I think that if you can look at your fellow man through empathy and compassion, and then what happens is when you see somebody behaving really badly, if you just recognize that people lash out when they have been treated badly, and if you can just see that this person is lashing out because they have been treated badly and not take it personally, because these, a lot of these people aren't out to hurt us. They themselves are hurting. And then if we can recognize that, we don't cause more damage by reacting badly. Right. We and have to have a, cycle of abuse. a certain amount of detachment. There's, there's uh, something I read recently, and, and it's it's one of those things when you mention to most people, it, it, it kind of, people start to argue about it. Um, for example, there's what, what, um, I can't remember her name. Um, anyway, so you have a type of person who comes into your life. And this person had made an agreement on the other side of the veil to to help you learn a lesson. And if you don't learn that lesson, then another person will come along who's even worse than, than that person. So, for example, the person who ha the the woman who has a boyfriend who you know emotionally mistreats her, and she doesn't get it that maybe she should stand up for herself. So then she breaks up with him, she runs away, and then she finds an ex-boyfriend. And this one, he, you know, he's even worse. Uh, Ramon, and that, then, that came out of the uh, book to, from... Uh, yes, yeah. I was trying to remember. Um, what's her name? Uh, Sherry... Sh Sherry Cortland. Yes, thank you. Big... Okay, so, well, I mean, that's the other thing. Uh, that I, I talk a lot about in the first book, too, in so many different ways, is that we are all here to grow. And the harder we fight it, the harder we get pushed. Yep. And I think that's very important to recognize because humanity is going through a shift. And it's, it's so much easier if you don't go against the flow, if you don't fight it. And really what we're being asked to do as individuals is let go of our hatred, our prejudice, uh, our ungratitude, we're being asked to 
see how magnificent this planet is, the, the people and the critters on it, and appreciate it and let go of all the pain, let go of all the uh, regret, the shame. Just let it go and experience the beauty that's all around you. And I think that's really important. So, yeah, if we fight it, it gets worse because we're not learning the lesson. And I think that in a lot of ways we can lessen karma if we learn the lesson really fast. Then, then we don't have to keep relearning it or being pushed to learn the lesson. We just get it. We understand it was a lesson. And, and that's another thing a lot of people don't really understand. And in some cases, that's where uh, regression therapy can come in really helpful. I personally have friends who had awful, awful, awful childhoods, really awful the relationships with their siblings were terrible, their parents just, you know, and I was fortunate I didn't go through that, but a lot of people do. And it can be very helpful for healing purposes if people do have some type of regression therapy done because then they can understand why this was their program. And then you can grow from it. You can recognize it as a learning tool, and then you learn from it. You don't keep holding it and taking it personally, you just understand what you were meant to understand, which always goes back to the same thing, especially love, forgiveness, and gratitude. If we could practice those three things every day, why would we need to experience karma again? Yep. Very good question. But, yeah, I mean, that's, that, it's really, I know it sounds really simplistic, but there's a great deal of truth in that. If we, if we, it reminds me of a movie, I don't know if I've mentioned this before on your show, it was called um, The Box with Cameron Diaz in it. Did you guys see that? Uh, no, yeah, I, I did. That. Yeah, I don't remember it, but I did. I know, because I have it. <laughs> yeah, well, the, basically, the way the story goes, and it's, it's I, I don't know that a lot of people really get how deep that story is. It's a really neat story, but she's approached by... by, by And uh, he tells her he oh, will give that's... her a million dollars if she pushes the button. Yeah. But he explains to her, if you push this button, somebody on the planet is going to die. It's going to be a person that you don't know. You'll never know who the person was, but they're going to die if you push the button. I will deliver the million dollars in cash. And I think that is where a lot of our society is at because people will poison one part of the ocean or allow it to be poisoned for money, thinking that because they live on the other side of the planet, it doesn't matter. Right. But it does matter. It always matters because there is no separation. Everything affects everything else. It's this huge ripple. So in many ways, our, our individual relationships are, the, are very much the same way, in that at the end of the show, they go through hell, all of these characters, because they push the button, and, and he gets asked, at the end, how do we stop this? And he says, very simply, stop pushing the button. That's all <laughs> you have to do is stop pushing the button. And we have that going on in every aspect of our lives. I mean, we have technology like heart being abused. They're pushing that button. Stop pushing the button. Stop dumping toxins uh, into the ocean. Stop putting toxins in our food. You know, stop treating your fellow man badly. Stop thinking that animals don't matter and that you, you don't need... You know, it's more important to put your oil well up than uh, care for a dying species because everything that's here on this planet has a very unique energy signature that's required for all of the other energy signatures to operate at maximum potential. So every time we alter something or we delete something, it's no longer the same program. It starts to break down. Everything is connected that way. So, yeah, if we could just approach people with a little bit of empathy and compassion, and, yeah, it's irritating when... Uh, somebody cuts us off in traffic and we have to slam on our brakes and we're just thankful that we didn't get into an accident, but, you know, try to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Did they just get fired? Did they just lose their home? Did one of their children just die? Uh, you know, don't take it personally. Try to love the person anyway. And, and because, if, because if they're mean to you and then you're mean back, it's hitting the button again. Yep. Right. It, it continues the cycle. So all of us, it, it, to some degree, we can't change the way the other people behave, but we can change the way we behave. 
And that really helps a lot, especially if you know that the reason people act badly is because they've been wronged somehow. Imagine if we all stopped wronging each other. If we just stopped, if we stopped hitting the button. Yeah. So it's a little thing, it, but it makes a big difference. That also, I remember, um, it reminds me of something in junior high school. Um, a friend of mine from junior high school was really in love with this one girl, and I, I'm sure everybody remembers that junior high school, you know, the puppy eyes and stuff. And um, she just, like, really, you know, pulled out his heart and just stomped all over it. And he swore to himself from that day on he would never treat a woman that way. And he kept that promise, like... But he he never realized to, to stop, you know, what, what you're saying, pushing the button. Yeah, that's true. I, I had a... a, a a really great conversation with um, uh, Jacob Appleman last month. Uh, We did a show together, and um, it hasn't come out yet, and I know he's uh, located in the country where the storms are, so I hope that he's okay. Um, But we talked a lot about the relationship issues because people don't understand how this works. Uh, For instance, if... um, if, uh, let's say, one of the parents when you're a child abandons the other parent, then you may go to the other extreme where you decide you're going to stay married no matter what happens. doesn't matter what happens, you'll never, ever, ever get divorced. But I've seen parents who've done far more damage to themselves and their children by not getting divorced. Mm -hmm. So it's important to look at everybody involved and try to find the space of balance because it's not the same for everybody because everybody's at a different end of the spectrum or their pendulum is swinging in a different place. So one size doesn't fit all. But again, if you can just recognize how, how does the way I behave change the energy of the situation? Is my behavior explosive? Is it compassionate? And how does that energy affecting these other people reflect back to me through their behavior? If we could, I mean, again, I know it sounds really simple, but if we could just stop hitting the button. I mean, I know that there are people that just are not nice people. There's nothing that I can do about that, but I think that when I interact with people like that, I try not to be cruel in the response because it pushes them further in that direction. You know, forgiveness goes a really, really, really long way. Yeah, I've seen I've seen more than one uh, argument or fight actually uh, completely stopped by somebody just not reacting. So you know, Absolutely. someone out there Absolutely. trying trying to push buttons and the buttons weren't getting you know the person wasn't allowing the buttons to be pushed. I, and, and me, I'm I'm a prime case of that. I've had people try to push my buttons and I just wouldn't play the game, and it just totally diffuses the situation. Yeah, that's that's important too because there are people who who get addicted to that kind of energy that they can manipulate people that way. And if we don't re- if we don't give them the response they're looking for, I think it begins to teach them that maybe there's a better way or that it's really not a, a lifestyle worth pursuing because you're not always going to get what you want from people that way. And that very much goes back to taking back your own personal power. You don't have to respond the way they want you to because they feed off of that kind of energy. And if we give them what they want, it's in a way it's uh, kind of a codependency. We're feeding the beast, right? Right. Yeah. It's 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 also I, it's like a like you were saying a balance thing. Um, for example, um, here's it's it's very um, typical where you, if someone wrongs you, you don't. You don't react to it, but I think there's also the the balance where if someone's constantly doing wronging you, you need to stand up for yourself as well. Like, so some people say, you know, I'm gonna be nonviolent, but it's, they they start taking all this abuse from people. So it's well, well, I, I know I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I mean, don't be a doormat. There's that. If, if you can't remove yourself from this other person's 
you know, energy output, I guess we can say, if you can't avoid the other person, then at some point, yeah, you need to stand up for yourself. But that doesn't always mean that you need to be cruel or mean or even violent about it. I think, I mean, again, you know, it goes back to that riots exper experiment that so many people have done, and you guys did it too. The one that you ignore rots the fastest. Yep. So people, I mean, that's, that's a big part of the shift that's happening. Really, right now, 2011 is a year where things are going to be revealed to people. They're going to see, all over the world, they're going to see all of the cruelty, all of the games, all of the behind-the-scenes theft, the murders. People are going to see it, and, and they're going to see it in a way that they are not going to be able to hide from it. They're going to see it all over this planet. And then next year in 2012, what people are going to have to really focus on is how they contributed to the problem. Because power, you can't take power from someone who won't give it to you. Right. It's, it's, there's always an agreement there. Even, even if you don't actually sit down and sign a contract and, and they say, okay, well, you know, if you're, you know, if you're dumb enough to let me do this to you, I'm going to do it, sign here. But, but again, part of this healing process is getting all of that stuff out because people don't realize they're being abused. They don't realize they have choices they haven't been told about. And, of course, a really good example of that is free energy. People don't make choices they don't know they have. So we're getting to a place where people are going to understand that they do have other choices and that, yeah, maybe in some ways or in some cases in a lot of ways, they were contributing through ignorance. But we're going to reach a point where there will be no more ignorance. Everybody's going to understand what's been happening and who's behind it. And then we're going to have to decide on personal levels, are we ready to grow past it? Or are we so comfortable with the way our life is now that we're just going to keep doing it? And there's a very real fear of change that people have. And I think, I think 2013 will be a very pivotal, uh, pivotal year because of that. And of course, uh, the death card is card 13. And that's the lesson of the card, is that if, if you're taking a path that will lead to physical death or degeneration and degradation and suffering, and you know that there's another way, you're kind of at a crossroad. You have to make a choice. And so, you, so really you're talking about two different ways of restarting civilization. You can do it through through change. Just change. If you don't like the, the way it works, especially after you know what's really going on, then you can change it. But, but we're going to get to a place where everybody's going to see that if we don't, this will be the path, this will be where that path goes, which will be another type of agreement between every individual who decides, I want to continue that path, even knowing what the outcome will be. So that's something that people have to recognize. Yeah. But again, I know, it's, I know it's simple, but the thing that you ignore does have a tendency to wrap on fastest. So if we know that this particular uh, group of people is doing this and that we're paying for it, we can stop paying for it. We can, we can chew. A lot of, like a lot of people say, you can vote with your pocketbook. I mean, there are simple little things that we can do now, but we're going to get to a point where people are really are going to have to choose and they're going to have to make some hard choices. Right now, where we're at right now in the world, I, I, I just have the the tower card in my mind. You know, uh, yeah, that's that's part of it too. I, I think that that actually might come a little bit later uh, for a lot of people, and it's you know very much tied in with what we talked about a moment ago. In that, the harder you refuse to grow, the harder you get pushed. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's always that push because the universe does seek balance. There's always that push to see, you know, see how you're unbalancing it so that you can handle it. And when we take that responsibility on, that's evolution. Then we stop revolving and we start evolving. evolving. That's the difference. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the difference. Now, here's, here's a question that I thought of specifically for you. Um, yesterday I was teaching at a um, preschool and, and 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 I was just thinking about it. I was like okay which one of these kids are like crystal children or rainbow children and 
And this one little girl in particular, something about her eyes, and, and I just was like, this little girl has to be a rainbow child. It's just something about her, the way her eyes, just like the way she looks at you. So with my question is, how do you recognize, because I think this is very important, how do you recognize another um, light worker, a uh, rainbow child? How does Crystal Clark or Tom recognize another person doing the same work with just by looking at them? I, well, it's not by looking. It's by I, what I feel is I feel it's almost a vibration. It's just I feel right around them. You know, it just, I get the feeling. Yeah, there's a lot to that. You know, I, I don't look at people that way. I don't, I don't look at a person and say, oh, this is a rainbow person or this is a, an indigo person. I, I honestly, swear to God, do not look at people that way. I just see people. Yeah, well, and, same here. I, I'll agree with that. I, I mean, I get the feeling whether they're, you know, uh, I don't know, there, there are those that I, I come in contact with that I have a, a very instinctual and very strong feeling that they are here for a purpose of the light. Okay, they're here for, uh, they are, uh, they're shining. You know, I, I just see feel a glow off of them. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because, like, for example, with some of these kids, it just jumps right at you. And some of them, uh, you know you don't really feel anything, but some of them, it's just so strong that it's, it's re at least for me, it's really hard to, to say, like, to, to, to ignore. Right. Yeah, you know, well, I think, you know, everybody is brought together for a reason. I mean, the three of us have been brought together for a reason. Um, I meet people that, that other people I know already know, and you kind of find that you're finding each other. So that's really more of how I look at it you know, why, why am I here with these people today? What's the purpose for that? And if, because it's, you're not always, as a light worker, it doesn't make sense to always be around light workers because they don't need the help. Right. So, so at some point you need to make sure that you're in a position to find people that need help or just recognize when they're right in front of you. And so I, I just really just kind of take it moment by moment. And, um, I mean, People are brought to me a lot of the time, really. It's kind of strange. They, they'll they just tell me what they need. It's a, it's kind of a strange story, I know, but I uh, the first house my husband and I bought, uh, I'd only been there for a few days, and I went out to check my mail, and my next-door neighbor walked out to her mailbox, and they were right by each other. And we were talking, and within a half an hour, this woman started telling me uh, about... Uh, her mother was a Mayan witch and how she was sexually abused in rituals as a child. And I, I instantly understood that a complete stranger is telling me all of this, and that's my cue to try to help this person heal. So for me, I mean, everybody sees the world a little bit differently, but I just kind of, you just kind of get a sense through the behavior of the person if this is someone that you need to heal or if you find yourself in a place where you've, you've not been around other light workers for a while and you start to feel your energy be zapped a little bit, or maybe you are around really negative people for a period of time, that can have an effect. And then you'll just have a whole bunch of uh, people that are more like you all of a sudden show up and give you exactly what you need to recharge yourself with joy again. So it, we just always get what we need when we need it. And, I, and so I, I just look at it more that way. And I think we're at a point now where all, all the children are really different. But I think that you have parents that are, I mean, I hate to say it, but it really is true. You have parents that are just so screwed up that the, the children are having a very difficult time evolving properly because of the families that they're in, because the, the parents aren't evolving. Right. And, of course, a lot of us are struggling with that right now, especially in the school system. Because we have children that, that don't want to just sit down and do exactly what they're told because they're bored to death. And we know that at some point we're going to be asked to drug our children. And that's really frustrating because you have a system that doesn't want to grow, but it's being seeded with beings that have grown beyond it already. 
so that's part of the growing phase, too. People are not going to want to let go of what they think is right, which is why all this stuff is going to happen so that people can see it isn't right. It hasn't been right for a very long time, and that if you want to evolve, you have to let it go and move on. You have to take that next step. It's, it's necessary. We can't evolve if we don't do it. So that's really just kind of how I look at it. If, if, I, if I'm in a place where I can heal someone, they're brought to me, and if I need the healing, I find those people. Yeah. Got a, 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 years ago, when I, oh, I'd been on the path for about five years, and uh, I put out the call to the universe, okay, uh, I, I really want to share what I, the message that I've received so far, and let me help some people and share what I've got. And so I put out that, and uh, it was just like I was bombarded with people, just strangers, it, all sorts of different people coming up to me, and uh, it was, uh, oh, geez, it lasted for about a month. I was constantly getting bombarded with different people that I that were coming to me with, with this problem and that problem and, and this issue and that issue, and, and I was like, okay. After that, I realized, well, okay, I got what I asked for. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's so. exactly right. And I, I think we need to not, you know, uh, we need to get out of the exclusive club because the, the universe is inclusive. And so I, I don't think that we should label people at all. If, you know, if you, if you I guess I just don't see why it matters. It's just, it's just why, why were you brought together and that's what's important. And I think that... Um, the new age community has to be very, very careful about that because there are a lot of people who feel like they're getting left behind because they're not having these mystical, magical experiences. But the truth is a lot of people don't need those kind of experiences to get it. For some people, it's something very, very simple. And then all of a sudden the light bulb goes on and they're, they're gone. They're on it. They're, they're, they're of service. They know how to do it. That was their trigger and it's fine. So we have to be careful about, well, I've had all these experiences and this person hasn't, so I'm more spiritually advanced because I don't believe that's the case. I think that some people actually need really, really far out and repetitive experiences in order to accept how special they are, and then they can get on their path and be of service. So it's really different for everyone. So I think it's important not to try to classify anything as this being more important or that being more important. It's all necessary. It, it all has this beautiful plan that will unfold the right way if we don't fight it. Excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah, I, uh, I was uh, uh, corresponding with some guys on Facebook, and uh, some guy got on there and started uh, started the the oh all religions were created to control the masses. They're the bane of the world. All blah blah blah. You know, it's all religion's fault. And I, w I was like, uh, uh, hang on now, hang on now. Uh, you know, sure, uh, if you look at our recent history of what religions have done in the world, absolutely, yeah, they, they have a very black stain on their, on their cloth, you know. But uh, if you look a little deeper and a little farther, you know, you know look back at the, the mystery schools, the pre-Christian era mystery schools, and even look at, look at some of the religions, that, the organized religions that are, currently active in the world uh you know the 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 and more specifically the eastern religions which have been, which have been around forever which are unity consciousness type religions uh and that are not you know they're they're not uh you know the the three bigs like uh the the christian muslim and, and jews but uh which you know, I guess guess those three religions in particular really put a bad name on all religions. But I think I think people need a place that they can go to learn these things. Hmm. You know, the, it's funny you mention that, Tom, because I was thinking about something like that earlier. And in you know, um, in South America, in the Caribbean, and in, in most of Africa. They they practice um, uh, what's the perfect word for it? Uh, lack of a better word, uh, tribal type. So so for example, like Santeria, Voodoo, um, Yoruba, 
those kind of uh, religions. And what I've noticed with all religions, including Buddhism, believe it or not, is that the main problem is once you start to give your power away, so now once you start depending on that outside source, that's where I start finding the problem starts with the religions or the belief systems. Um, well, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, agree. I'll agree with that, yeah. Yeah, so for yeah, example... That's true because, because, you know, that's where everybody goes wrong because a really great teacher is trying to teach you how to do what they do. They're not saying, follow me around and send me all of your money, <laughs> right? right? They're just, they're, they're, they're showing you the pattern. That's what they do. They show you the pattern. But when people don't want you to know the pattern, because if you learn it, they don't make as much money. They direct, redirect your attention to something else. Yeah, it, it, that that goes the same to, with with the spirit. So, for example, um, growing growing up in 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 a Latin household, I learned a, a lot about like uh, the whole thing working with spirits and stuff like that. And what I've noticed is that a lot of the the uh, I'm lacking words today, fortune tellers and and uh, people who seers, they they would give their energies to the to these other beings. So it was. I remember. Oh, we always you always have to like give something to the being so they can help you. And I never saw like any real growth from them. Like they grew a little stronger. They knew a little more, but it was always giving their power to the spirits. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that that happens a lot. And uh, I was just having this conversation with my son the other day because he is a very, very brilliant child, but he hates school. He's one of those kids. And I was trying to explain to him why it's important to have knowledge because if somebody comes along and they can present themselves as being more intelligent than you, then you're going to get taken for a ride. And I think that we have a history of doing that. I think that uh, even the story in, uh, of Adam and Eve tells us that same message because you had somebody come along, everything was fine, you had somebody come along who understood things that Adam and Eve didn't understand. And it gave the impression that because this intelligence was so much, more, uh, so much smarter than they were that they should give their power over to this person and let them make the choices. And that's where the God complex comes in because immediately our relationship, our direct relationship to the Creator becomes interfered with by an intermediary who we latch on to because, and, and you know if there's a problem because instead of them teaching you to fish, they want to just give you a fish so you'll keep coming back. Right. Thinking, thinking that you can't go do it on your own. And that's, that's a clue also that there's a problem. You know, it's, it's really important that we share what we have with people in whatever way we can, or direct them to sources where they can go learn on their own and not just say, well, you know, this is just the way it is and, you know, you're going to burn in hell if you don't agree with it. People need to learn for themselves. That is really, really, really yeah. important. And a lot of people don't want to, and that's something that people are going to have to face because we choose representatives, which we shouldn't. Right. If, if you really want a civilization that's governed by the people, for the people, it really does need to be by the people and for the people, not a, a, an intermediary. Everybody should have a say. That's the way it should work. So we get into situations like this all the time, and then we think, okay, they're handling all of this, so I don't need to worry about it. And then we go over here, and then all of a sudden all this stuff happens that we don't know about because we're not involved. So there's kind of a personal laziness there, right? I don't, I don't want to learn anything. I just want to know. Or you have people that want to know. You know, they're professional knowers, but when it comes to actually doing something, they don't want to do it. They want somebody else to do it. So personal responsibility is really, really important all the way around. And that, 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 the universe is going to, <laughs> over the next couple of years, is going to be broadcasting that message louder and louder and louder until people start to get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll see it, and I'm sure you're already seeing it, because people don't get to say, you know, that's the other thing, too, is that if, if you go hire someone else, even if it's with your tax dollars, and we're talking about a congressman, 
and they mess it up, who do you blame? Well, you blame that guy. So, so there, you also have a, a type of ideology that says, I don't want the power because I don't want to be wrong. I can just blame somebody else that goes wrong. But, but that, we need to let that go because you can't be a co-creator if you constantly hand that over to somebody else just because you want to blame somebody else if it goes wrong. <laughs> you know? Right. And, I mean, a lot of people do that. And I think if, if we learn the sacred science, we learn how the laws of life function, we learn how we can repair them, how we can fix them, we learn not, how, how not to break them, then I, I think that being wrong isn't going to be as painful as people think it's going to be, you know? It's okay if we make new, if, if new errors. That's fine. But I would rather make a new error than the same one over and over and over because that's repetition and revolution. And what the universe wants us to do is evolve, take the next step. And people are going to really have to not be afraid of making their own choices. It's okay. Yep. Uh, it, that kind of reminds me here, um, it seems like every 10 to 1 year, barely 1 year, most of the prime ministers here, they they don't make it that far because people are complaining about them so much that they just end up quitting. and They never do the four-year terms. They, there hasn't been one prime minister who's finished the four-year terms in six years. Wow, that's uh, that's really interesting. I mean, do do the people even know what they want? No, I mean, no, because the thing, everybody's right? everybody. Well, the complaining is not really coming from the physical people, just from other bureaucrats, other parties that really want to get in power. Which really is, is because in America you have two major parties, but here you have around five. Oh wow. So, so they're constantly at each other's throats, and really they just want the power. So they, of course they'll they'll complain whether he's doing something right or wrong. They'll still sit or there. Or spin it, it. Yeah, a lot, you have that like too, the, it, It's a lot yeah, of different, lot of different agendas in that soup. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing too, right? I mean, we know that people get crucified in the court of public opinion all the time. That's. That's one of the powers that be or, or shadows biggest tool. That's what they do. And in fact, I'm sure you guys have read about how they have these false personas that they're using now on social networking sites because if, if people are talking about things that they don't want us to talk about, they use these false personas right. to attack that person in front of everybody to yep. discourage people from doing that. So it's really the same thing going on in, in politics. It's just at a larger scale. It's the same tactic. And, and again, that's the thing. People are afraid of being, uh, you know, ridiculed. Well, who cares? I mean, if, if it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. Stand up and do it. And you know, who cares what, what people say? If it's right and you know it's right, why would it matter? But that's part of the problem, isn't it? Because people are so confused, they don't know what's right anymore. Exactly. You can see that even, yeah, even with the vaccination issue. I mean, you've got, uh, I remember watching an episode of Law & Order SVU, which I don't ever watch. I usually don't watch regular television very often, but I was flipping through the channels, and I stopped and watched it because this was around the bird flu scare when they were trying to get everybody vaccinated. And I realized through this show it was a court case of a woman who was being sued because she didn't vaccinate her child. And another woman's child died and said it was this woman's fault because her child didn't get the vaccination. And what really, really irritated me about this whole thing, because it was all about crucifying people who would not get their children vaccinated in the court of public opinion through media. Right. What they never address, though, is if the woman whose child died got a vaccination, how did the child die? Exactly. That's the part they wouldn't talk about. And see, again, people, tell me what to think. Tell me what to think. People really need to learn how to think for themselves. They need to learn to discern the truth, and they need proper knowledge to do that. And that's why shows like we're doing are so important, because we are the other side of the coin saying to people, 
is that really right? Are you aware that this is going on? Did you realize you have this other choice? And then people can actually make better choices and probably won't be so afraid to choose because they'll understand the choices better. But that's a really good example of how confused people are. You have people that ha have done their homework and know that vaccinations are really, really bad for you, and then you have the media constantly pumping out the garbage. So yeah. uh, you it, know, it's, it's important that we share what we know. With that being said, um, is is it? Do you have to vaccinate your child in in Las Vegas? You know, I did. Uh, I got lucky the last couple of years in school. I homeschooled him last year, and then this year they were asking for a vaccination, a new vaccination for children his age. But the school that I sent him to understood that you have a right as a parent to opt out and handed me the form before I asked it. I asked for it. So I got really lucky. I didn't have to argue in a fight with people because you do have the right to opt out if you want to. In Sounds New like Jersey, so. you actually uh, don't. Um, Are you cause... sure that you don't or are they just telling people that you don't? No, you, you don't. Because I was, I was researching this and actually... Um, there was, uh, I forgot who it was, but it was on Coast to Coast. Somebody had came on, and they were one of the people trying to fight that law where um, your child cannot attend the school if they're not vaccinated because they're seen as a, da as, as a danger. Hmm. And, right, um, and, that's, and, and that's that ridiculous thing again, right? If, if all the other kids in the class have the vaccination and they're protected, why do you care if yeah, my kid doesn't have exactly. one? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what they don't talk about. So It doesn't matter. So, it, at first, my my sister wasn't really, like, she didn't really care too much about what I was saying about the vaccinations. But once her daughter had the vaccination and then all of a sudden she was sick all the time, then mm -hmm. she was like, you know, before the vaccination, she would have never sick. And I was like, I told you. And so now my sister is, is, is really not. Um, she she doesn't she doesn't want she's not really fighting it yet, but she doesn't want her to get vaccinated anymore. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, if if people live in a state where they're trying to mandate things like that, um, there are agencies out there, and that's the other thing. You know, there are some people that just get so disgusted by this, they go out and they start a group, and one day it's five people, and the next day it's five thousand. So there are uh, people out there that you can find on the Internet that will help people fight this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah New Jersey is called expensive. Mothers Against Vaccinations or something like that. Yeah, and it's important to have a support network, and it's important to explain to people how ludicrous it, the, the idea is that your child can contaminate all of the other children. It, see, none of it makes sense, because if vaccinations really, really work, the argument doesn't work either way. You don't get to say, well, your child's in danger from all the children who got vaccinations. If the vaccinations work, my child isn't in danger. And if they work, my child can't endanger them because they work. The, I mean, that's the thing. The, the vaccination, there's really no argument about it. And I think that people, that's one of those things where people have to stand up and say, that we're done. We're not going to let you poison our children anymore. It's not okay. Yep. You know, and that's something people don't want to do. They want somebody else to take care of that. Well, we are the somebody else's. You know, people say, uh, well, you know, Jesus isn't going to come and save us, and the aliens aren't going to come and save us. And no, they're not, because we're perfectly capable of doing it ourselves. We just need to get off our butts and do it. Yeah. You know, we are, we are no, the we, no. we are the divine intervention we're waiting for. That's true, and I, you know what, if the only way that you can, if you're at a place where you have absolutely no support at all, and the only way you can get out of vaccinating your child is to homeschool, then I would do it until you do find enough people in your community where you can go together and fight it together, because it's really a numbers game, which I think we've talked about before. It's all in the numbers, which is why they work so hard to keep people asleep, and we work so hard to wake them up because we really need to tip the balance in our favor. And then collectively we can decide where we want it to go, 
how, how, what kind of a future do we want to have? We can get rid of all the fluoride in the water. Uh, instead of saying, okay, put lithium in it, we can say, you know, you can't put lithium in it, and by the way, get the fluoride out, <laughs> right? <laughs> so people have to stand up and stop waiting for somebody else to, to, to handle it because nobody else is going to handle it. Yep. Well, with that said, we are reaching the top of the hour. So, uh, Crystal, have you got a parting comment for the first hour? Or was that what a good one? <laughs> oh, uh, I guess. Well, you know what? Just, you know, recognize that Earth is not some awful, horrible prison planet. It's an absolutely beautiful garden. And when we can start seeing it that way, we can start experiencing it that way. So that's important to keep in mind. Absolutely. Okay, where can everybody pick up your books and uh, your website, please? Uh, yeah, there's uh, the books are sold on you know Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, there are links on my website. The website is www.thesolsocietty.com. That's the Soul Society.com, and all of the information is there. Great. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm, any any word on book three yet? <laughs> no, no. Every I month we project. harass her about this. <laughs> I know. Every month I have projects cropping up and cropping up and cropping up. And so I'm like, hey, I'm only one person. Knock it off. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, uh, condemnation without investigation, the height of ignorance. And thank you for listening to the 100th Monkey Radio. And, and don't forget to stay tuned for um, Brooks coming up next. And then pop into the archives or YouTube and check us out. We'll have a link linking it. To somewhere. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out. So, All right. Good night, everybody.